Oh, man, long time no see, fellas and girls. Uh, it's been a long time. And this is Popper Update number 19. Today is the 3rd, I think, of December 2012. Um, I have been just extremely busy. I schedule at work's been all screwed up. Um, I've just been spending more time with my family and doing all sorts of stuff. So, and I've been a little sick lately. That hasn't helped me. Also been volunteering a lot at my church, doing lights for the worship services, which is a blast, but it's a lot of work. Um, takes about four to six hours to actually get stuff programmed in the board, and then you actually have to run the whole show. So I love it, but it can be time consuming. So here's what I got for you. Uh, this is update number 19. Uh, some of you may be wondering where have I been at. I've just been really busy, um, but I do plan on getting some more stuff done. As soon as I can. It's also been freezing, but I'm in a t-shirt today because it's like 70 plus degrees. It feels great, so that's always a plus, so that helps out. Um, so I'm going to show you the circuit, the 555 timer circuit. I will give these schematic away, and um, I guess that's about it. So let's get started. Um, obviously the device here used to be, I took components off of it, but this used to be my circuit, 555 timer circuit. And I basically turned it into this. Now, <clears throat> I have built much better circuit boards. And I'm not really happy with the way this turned out. But it's what I did in a matter of about two or three days. Um, including finishing the schematic and building and etching the circuit board. The circuit board looks terrible. I had a really hard time with this one for some reason. And I laid it out so I could use the least amount of jumpers. I have one there, there, there and here. Otherwise it's all components making the jumps and there is a few things on the back that I had to manipulate because I had some stuff wrong. Um, but That's what I get for rushing through it. So I will probably go ahead and post um, the circuit and I was trying to wait till I got this finished so I could you know give you guys the uh, printed circuit board layout. I'll probably still do that. I'll probably still give you the printed circuit board layout as it is, as it is here, um, it works pretty good is the way I've got it. I've got this isolated. Um, I am missing one component. I accidentally burned up one of my uh, uh, 12 volt uh, voltage regulators, so I've just bypassed it because the chip doesn't really care, but I put it in there because it's better to be stable. But uh, it still functions, so basically I've just got a, a MOSFET. Right now I'm actually using an IRFP260. But originally, I've just used an IRFP uh, 460, um, I believe. But it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as it's a MOSFET in channel, it will work for this circuit. And depending on what amps you want to use, you can use whatever type you want. I do have a little fan mounted on here, even though it doesn't get hot, especially since this thing doesn't run all the time. But I figured in case something would happen, I've got it on there for cooling. I've even got the little pin placement here for the fan and it hooks up to the isolated side. Um, the, the driver side here is hooked up to a single voltage regulator and the whole entire driver circuit runs off that. Now I did go ahead and put some indicating LEDs. These are actually Christmas lights and they must run on a lower voltage because they're a lot brighter for the amount of voltage I'm putting into them. So I really don't know what they are but they must be really low voltage. So I, I went ahead and done that um, just for indication so I can s visually see what's going on. Uh, this LED is for the beginning part of the circuit. This LED is for the second part. And then the white LED here is for the output. Then I have a TLP250 that I'm using to isolate the primary side of the circuit from the secondary side. Now this is a MOSFET driver or um, also a... Uh, GBIT, I believe, a transistor type of MOSFET uh, driver as well, and it's an opto-isolator all in one chip. If you look them up, you will never hardly ever find a TLP250. You'll find a TLP250F, and uh, the only difference I could find was a little bit of a frequency difference. But I ordered the PLT, uh, or the TLP250F, and I got a TLP250 without the S. I don't really know what the difference is. Um, I honestly couldn't find much difference on the data sheet except for the frequency. Now this particular driver MOSFET will only go up to about uh, 25 megahertz. Uh, or kilohertz. 25 kilohertz, I mean. And after that it just kind of it kind of drops off. It's not meant for fast switching. 
but it works great for this because I'm only up to, to about uh, 10 kilohertz. So, with this circuit, I decided to make everything as compact as I can, so I did a pretty good job at that, and um, it seems to work pretty well. And I, what I originally wanted to do is just make these little pin placements so you could take prongs such as this uh, off of old fans or whatever you could find, just recycle components and then plug them right into the board. For instance, this one is for the isolated power input. Alright, so what I wanted to do is put each one of these pin connectors I got here is for a different part of the switchings or a different part of the resistors or the potentiometers or whatever you want to put on the, on the input side of things. So with that, I decided that I wanted to make a an external, um, and this is the most haggard looking thing you've ever seen, but it works. Uh, and, and by the way, I will be engineering or doing another circuit board completely different with all the inputs laid out on it. So if you want to wait till you make one of these, you can. Um, I am going to go ahead and use this in my build here inside the actual box because uh, it functions. But it's it's... This is not my best work. This is terrible. So you guys know. Um, yeah, it's horrible. But it works. Uh, so I have all my inputs here. I have all these labeled. On my schematic I have all of these labeled. These are switches for different uh, time ranges. Um, automatic pulsing. Um, manual pulsing. Overrides. I've got all sorts of uh, different functionality on this thing. Um, and the backside looks like total chaos because I did not feel like etching a second circuit board. So I just went ahead and laid out everything with the uh, standard uh, bus bar stuff. Um, brazed bus bar. And I did go ahead and mount my two potentiometers up for my frequency and duty cycle right on this board. And uh, that is because I only plan on setting it and then that's it. It's going to be all set internally. I'm not going to get it externally. All of these things over here will be set externally. That's why I've got these terminal connectors on there. So as you can see, I've got all these pin connectors randomly placed on this board. And I've got all these pin connectors randomly placed on this board. But these actually fit right on top of there. If I can get it, because I can't see it. And there we go. Alright. Boop. And now all those pins that I had in there fit right on there. And this is the way I can isolate this circuit board from a breakout board, basically. So, um, that's basically the circuit. It looks totally like crap. I will be honest, I have done a much better job. If you guys get bored sometime, go watch my power supply build. I built an entire power supply and I show you how to etch these circuit boards. Now, I know a lot of you have told me in the past that there's a better way of doing it because I'm still using toner and heat transferring it. But, for the, uh, you know, for the layman's guy, it works really well if you can get the process down. And for this process, for this board, I didn't have much luck, so it, it's kind of crappy. But anyway, you guys are going to have to deal with that part. I'll go ahead and connect the uh, driver part and show you what it does. It does the same thing as I showed you last time. You can see my LEDs flashing there. See how bright they are? Those are running through a 10K resistor. So it's dropping only like a volt across them, and they're still pretty bright. Um, it's just for... Uh, Indications for me, for reference, if I if I look inside here and say something something isn't working, you know, is it my driver circuit? I can pop this apart um, and pull a five 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 timer out, and voila, replace it, and I'm good to go. So that's the only reason I put them LEDs in there. So again, this is uh, the duration of time that it's on when it fires, and this is the duration of time how long it takes to fire. So the white LED is the rapid fire right there. And so is the red. And then I can set how long it's on. So if I want that on just for a short time, boop, barely even saw it. Alright, and these will be external. And that's why I've got them mounted on here just the way I've got them. And all these jumpers around here are actually switches. But I've just got everything bypassed. All those switches will be inside of this panel. I'll have the auto. I'll have the manual. Um, that's what these selector switches are for. And all that stuff these buttons will actually be wired up to this circuit. That's kind of why I have it like this. Uh, Alright, so hopefully I've given enough explanation on that really quickly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you this really quickly. Here is the circuit. Uh, okay, here's the first 555 timer circuit. Again, I will post this over at the forums. 
But this first is an A stable. It's set up as an A stable timer, and it is the it is the frequency timer of how often this thing fires. All right, that signal, and then I do have a there's a potentiometer here, and two capacitors. It goes from 0.5 to 75. Excuse me, 0.5 of a. Well, let me read this. Five seconds to 75 seconds. Excuse me, and then from 0.43 second to five seconds. That's how long it fires between each one. And that depends on which capacitor you select here. And there's a switch here and then a resistor here. This resistor adjusts the time and then these resistors select the range. I'm sorry, these capacitors select the range. And then I do have a diode here. This is just for indication. So the output goes through an auto manual switch. If this is open, nothing happens to the rest of the circuit. If this is closed, the signal from this timer gets dropped into the next timer. Now I do have an edge trigger circuit here. It's just two resistors and a capacitor. Okay, um, It's just an edge triggering circuit. Now last time I showed you this I was triggering it from the uh, dropping edge of the push button. Well I, I did get it to run off the triggering edge which is what I wanted to do originally. I finally did get that working. I played with it for quite some time and I got it working. I don't know why I didn't have it working right the first time but it is what it is. But it's working now. So this is a manual fire um, button. This is a push button, not a selector switch. But you have to disconnect this circuit. So if this is in manual and you hit this, you're going to basically be, um, well, I guess it's not. But I didn't want it to, I didn't, I wanted to, well, I guess that's it. That's right. Okay, so that's just a fire button. All right, so when you switch this, it hits it to ground. So I have uh, three points on my terminal blocks for that. So this is a manual fire. You hit this button and it, it, it triggers the edge. You can hold it down as long as you want. It doesn't matter. And when you let it go, it doesn't matter. It only fires for the one time that you push the button and that is it. Alright, so it edge triggers this next timer, which is a monostable timer. This I call the duration timer. This is how long the trigger is on. Okay, so again I have different capacitors and again you can this is set up for the popper. You can do whatever you want with these capacitors to make this longer or shorter. Now, right here is a high and a low. It goes from 0.1 of a second to 11 seconds, or 0.3 of a second down to, I think that's 3 microseconds. 0 0.003 of a second. And that's depending on, on this selector switch, on these capacitors. Again, the resistor is for the time value, how long you want between these two ranges. Okay? And again, an LED for reference, and it comes down here to a switch. This is an optional switch that I put in. Well, they're all optional, really. But I put this in here, so if I wanted to just fire this thing continuously, uh, for whatever frequency that this next timer is putting out, I can just flip this switch. So it's an always-on output. I probably won't wire that up. I'll probably bypass it and use it just for um, testing things. Um, it probably will not be an actual push button in my station. So the last timer is, uh, again, this timer fires this last timer and um, the last timer is an A-stable and I call it the coil duty slash frequency timer. So this is the, the output side of things. This output basically has a frequency of whatever you set it to. Again with um, this was the, the different capacitors. Um, this capacitor here C9. I have a note over here. You can see that if you put different values in there it's different uh, frequencies. Now again I do have the option to get up to 111 kilohertz but my uh, TLP250 won't go that high. At least the original one. Since I ordered these F's maybe they'll do a higher frequency. Anyway so I, again I have this is what I was trying to tell you guys last time. I actually have a standard A stable that is duty cycle frequency so I can adjust the duty cycle with this potentiometer here. Then here is where I had this other potentiometer that basically turns into a variable capacitance. So I have this capacitor dropped across this resistor or this variable resistor potentiometer and when I turn this it varies the capacitance to ground. So originally you just wouldn't have this at all. This is what it would look like. But I added this in here and now I can vary the, the capacitance of C9 and that gives me my different frequencies. And again C9 can be adjusted between these frequencies. Uh, you can play with this. I play with this a lot. 
And what happens is at higher frequencies, there's a range between about 1 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz that jumps drastically. Then the rest of it's pretty slow. So if you had like a 10 turn potentiometer, the higher frequency range would be great. But don't forget the output um, of my driver circuit doesn't go that high. The um, It will, but it chops it up real bad. It looks bad. It, it has like a capacitance charge to it. So again, I have a LED for reference, um, but this is that this is that interesting part of the circuit that you guys, I told you that was very rare or something that I played with until I got it working correctly is this variable capacitance using a resistor and a capacitor to adjust the frequency of this timer. Again, the duty cycle must be set and then adjust the frequency. All right, so that is basically the actual timer circuit. Then I, I just have a regular regulator up here, 12 volt regulator. Um, I am using 12 volt regulator for this circuit, a 5 volt regulator. It may work, but you're going to have to play with the values because when it gets too low, things stop working right. You have to have enough voltage to edge trigger stuff. Um, for instance, I had a timer that it was only putting out half the voltage and it wouldn't trigger the next part of the circuit. So make sure you have high and low voltages coming out of your 555 terminals when you're troubleshooting. All right, the second part of my circuit, here is the isolated TLP250 circuits. Um, right now I'm actually using this one, I'm using what I call the inverting, which actually I think I've got these backwards. Uh, I will not release these until I get everything straightened out, so don't actually use these. They'll work for you, but I've got to just make sure everything's accurate. Um, so basically it's just TLP250. Inside here there's a... a uh, gallium, I think, type of uh, diode and uh, something weird. And uh, then there's just a pickup over here and then uh, basically a bipolar transistor type of driver, I believe. Um, and it's just all built into that chip, so you don't have to worry about it. It's just this little nice TLP250. Um, I really like these. I've been using these on pretty much all of my projects and they seem to work fairly well. Um, most of the opto isolators, I've always burned them up. This one's they're doing really well. So on the other side of this I just have uh, your output. You have to supply a voltage to this chip. This is where the isolation voltage comes in. Alright, so I've isolated the voltage um, with a separate um, isolator uh, voltage regulator, uh, which you did not necessarily need, but I figured if I accidentally drop a bunch of voltage across my other system that uh, it'll stabilize everything. If there's fluctuations, it should stabilize it, and that's really the why, why I did that. So right here I have uh, the MOSFET driver um, hooked up to the MOSFET, and I do have a, uh, a blocking diode across there for any back spikes. It doesn't blow up my MOSFET, and uh, th there's one internally, but I went ahead and put an extra one out there. It's always a good thing to do. And then your load basically goes on the outside of here. So that's the entire circuit. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It's just some 555 timers set up as A-stable and mono-stable, an edge trigger, and um, uh, a MOSFET driver with an uh, opto-isolator built into it. And it's pretty, it's a, I mean, it seems to work fairly well so far. Okay. Um, wow. i got to try to explain everything because I don't like a lot of questions later. I, I, I don't mind them, but I like to... Uh, give you enough information that you don't have any questions. So, back to what I've got here. Uh, these two coils, um, I actually might, I have another plan I'm devising that I may actually not use these coils, but I might use a different um, type of setup. I'm not sure yet. The reason for that is I need to put some diodes across the outputs of these things, and they're kind of pricey. So I'm trying to get around that. And uh, right now I do have these in uh, parallel. Okay, last time I had them in series and I was running 12 volts and they're actually 12 volt coils so I was dropping 6 volts across each one uh, which is not enough and so um, I have now arranged these. I've played with all sorts of different arrangements and there's still more types of driving that I can do with this. Um, capacitive discharge type of driving and I've got all sorts of options but just driving them straight um, works pretty well. So basically I've just got them in parallel. All right, so I've got the negative hooked up to the positive, and the positive hooked up to the negative. All right, can you see that? And um, it doesn't really matter which way you drive them, as long as you have the polarity opposite, it doesn't really matter. So I'll go ahead and hook this up real quick. And uh, actually, I'm going to delete some stuff from my camera.
because it says it's out of film. Right, oh. and we're back. So, um, basically, I'm just going to hook this up. Um, I do have a, a terminal block here that I'll be wiring this to. Uh, let's see, this is my output side. This is my ground. Okay, and I'm going to hook up this, and it should fire away because I've got the circuit running right now. This is the driver to the TLP250. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Let me turn it up a little bit. So, those are some pretty good sparks. And I can adjust it to the right. Okay, so basically, my timer circuit here. I can set the duration, and this is what I'll be doing. I'll be firing the thing over and over and over, so I'll just set the duration just enough to get that, that arc across there, okay? And I'm only going to be driving this, like, this far. So... I'll speed it up. If I can get it closer. I'll only be running like 10 centimeters. About like that. But I can adjust the current. Too. But I can get some pretty nasty arcs out of this thing. And I can adjust this. If I don't trip and fall, break my neck. All right. So that's how that that uh, isolation part of the circuit works. This thing stays ice cold even running that um, all day. It's it works pretty good. So there you go. That's uh, the, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it, Russ's PAP timer circuit. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll label it here before I give it out, but it's just, it's the, uh, actually it's the PAP test timer circuit. That's what I called it. Um, so it worked out pretty well. Again, this is just a breakout board. It's all this is. It's just a terminal block breakout board with my, my resistors and stuff on it. Um, hook my switches up. So there you go. End of the story. Um, again, if you wait, I will be redoing this and laying it out on a bigger... I was trying to compact it as tight as I could get it. I should have just made it whatever size it was, put the terminal blocks on it, and had a bunch of jumpers, and just been done with it. But I didn't want to. I wanted to try to see how many... how, much, how far I could go with this without making jumpers. And I only made three there. One for the driver for the gate. That's pretty good. So there you go. That's the end of it. Uh, update 19. Uh, I guess there was a rumor going around that I wasn't going to be posting uh, any videos until after the 19th show. Uh, I don't know who got that idea, but nah, I've just been really busy. Spending a little bit more time with my family because uh, I got a lot accomplished in a very, very short amount of time. So I've been spending a little bit more time with them. That's always a good thing. I will give you a very quick sneak peek, but you probably already saw it. I walked past it. But here's the capacitor bank. 
Oh, that's all you get. I'm going to make a separate video on that because that's a totally different series. Uh, that's it. Peace and love, you guys. I really appreciate all the support. Um, any of the donations that I've received, uh, I really thank you for, for that. And um, I have a few things I'd like to purchase for this project that I will need a little bit more funding from. One of them is a uh, bubble dissimilar for actually detecting neutrons. Um, I have to buy two of them, and they're like $300, and then I have to pay shipping, which is like another $100. So I have like a $400 bill just to see if we have neutrons coming off of the tests that I'm going to be doing. So any help is always appreciated. And um, I will have an extra bubble decimeter. I'm willing to split that price in half, whatever it costs. I'll split it in half and, and sell one. I don't need two of them. So if anybody out there is doing similar experiments, they'd like to pitch in half. If I can raise the rest, hey, that'd be great. Um, that would be awesome. So that's it. Pap Update 19. Uh, hopefully I'll get some more accomplished. We'll start doing testing. Again, it's getting cold. That's really screwing some stuff up. Um, as far as being out here and doing stuff, uh, the cold weather is not a good thing to be out here. Uh, the other thing is, mm, I guess that's it. Uh, just trying to spend some more time with my family. That's always needed. Uh, there has been a guy, um, now I'm not going to remember his name, but you know who you are. And he did donate, uh, a hundred bucks. He said, take your family out and enjoy life a little bit. So to that person and anyone else with the same mindset, and I know you, a lot of you guys do, um, and I know a lot of you guys can't give money, and that's cool. Come over and just join the forums. Um, g give your knowledge, you know, give your knowledge. And uh, But to that individual, thank you very much. Um, I know my wife and kids will appreciate that. And uh, family is always first. This stuff's always second. That's the way life is. And God before everyone else. So, peace and love to you all. Here's the quote. Right? Meow. Deal with it, okay? With God, all things are possible. Peace out, homie G's. Have a good day. Laters.